Congressman Michael Waltz of Florida to get his take on some pressing issues regarding COVID. Hi, Congressman. Thanks for joining us. Thanks so much. Great to be here. So uh, some school districts in the country, they've already resumed in-person classes, new COVID cases, new outbreaks, I should say, they've been reported. Do you think that there, there should be some sort of a limit as to how many infections are recorded at a school before perhaps officials uh, reconsider reopening, possibly look at shutting back down again? Well, I think we have to give parents choice. Uh, that's the key piece here. We have to be able to give our children and our parents options. Uh, there are very real public health risks and downsides than not having children in school. Everything from addiction to opioids to our uh, special needs students uh, to depression. And and and, uh, and I think it's, it's pretty evident that kids just don't learn as well uh, when they're not in schools getting that face-to-face, -face, not to mention the economic effects particularly on blue collar families. You know, a lot of white collar families can work from home, their kids can be at home or they can afford extra tutoring, but a lot of our blue collar families cannot. Uh, and in order for our economy to get back going, we have to have kids in school. But at the end of the day, uh, we have to have that choice there. If you wanna pull your child out, fine. If you wanna have them in, then we need to create an environment where they can do it. Right, and then going back to some of the issues with the, the online learning, that's assuming that every child has access to internet that's reliable as well, so that's another problem some of these families are facing. But That's I absolutely right, particularly in rural areas. That's a huge issue in rural areas where a lot of these kids are much more isolated. Right, and that's something that the president and state and local officials have been looking at, at addressing. But, but again, uh, as time goes on, there's just there's a lot on everyone's plate that they're looking to handle right now. So it's understandable sure. how some things are taking a while. But I also want to ask you about this. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis uh, recently admitted the state's unemployment system was designed to fail. It took a lot of people by surprise him saying that uh, we know negotiations in Washington right now on that next stimulus are stalled. Do you think that uh, the president should take executive action then and extend something like the enhanced unemployment benefits that have expired already? Well, in terms of Florida's unemployment system, I think any system would have been completely overwhelmed. You know, when we go from 3% unemployment to at the peak upwards of 20 to 30% in such a, more, a short amount of time. But my understanding is the government, all, is the governor, uh, in Florida has an investigation underway to look at how the system was built and any flaws there. So we'll wait to see the results of that. At the end of the day, I have real concerns about a continued federal supplement on top of that state unemployment. Uh, Florida has pushed out about $12 billion so far. What we're seeing with the federal $600 a week supplement on top is that companies can't hire their workers back, particularly in the hospital industry and in the hotel industry. Uh, and, it's, and it's crushing morale for those that are still hard at work when they see their colleagues getting paid nearly the same for not working. I think it's, it's really detrimental to our economy. And it's a flat rate, whether you're in rural Iowa or downtown Manhattan, uh, where a dollar goes a lot further in one place than it does the other. It just doesn't make sense. All of that on top of record debt spending. Uh, at this point, uh, I, you know, I'm inclined to vote against it. So, so you think that the, the benefits or the, the risk, as I should say, the risks associated with an extension outweigh the benefits of them? You know, at this point, I know the president is looking at perhaps a very short term extension to buy the economy a little bit more time. But at the end of the day, what the Democrats are pushing for an extension until next spring, mm -hmm. I think will hurt our economy more than it helps it. And we cannot, as a federal government, just print our way out of this uh, problem. We have to find a way to live with the virus and get the economy going again. Right. So, uh, Congressman, also this pandemic has uh, exposed uh, quite a bit of weakness, several weaknesses in our supply chain, uh, including how we get our food even. You recently yeah. sponsored some legislation to bring the nation's a critical mineral supply chain back home and reduce our dependence on countries like China. Why do you think this area in particular needs more attention from Congress? You know, one thing that we've seen is whether it is producing masks, uh, uh, protective equipment, you know, our pharmaceuticals, right now uh, 90 percent of our antibiotics are produced overseas to critical minerals like lithium and tit uh, titanium and others, aluminum, that our entire economy runs on. Uh, we cannot be dependent on China 
who uses these minerals in a hostage-like fashion uh, for its own ends and uses this other equipment uh, and these other uh, production uh, facilities to its own geopolitical ends and holds the United States hostage. We can't have that. All of these things uh, are a national security issue. We want them produced in the United States. And if not in the United States, then an ally we can depend on and trust. That's what my legislation is looking to do, not just in mining, but in drugs, pharmaceuticals, protective equipment, really across the board. Made in America isn't just an economic issue, it's a national security issue. Mm -hmm. and, and then finally, just right before I let you go, do you think that, that the bill that you're proposing, what are the chances of it getting included in a larger stimulus package right now? Well, it is, parts of it are included in a stimulus, parts of it are in the defense bill, and the president just today signed an executive order on the pharmaceutical side. So we've seen this president is not afraid to take action if the Congress can't, especially when it comes to national security. He's done it from aluminum to steel, now to drug, uh, to our pharmaceuticals. And I think his stance on China and being strong on China is absolutely right. All right. Congressman Michael Waltz of Florida, thanks for joining us today. And thanks for your insight on these uh, pressing topics. Okay. Thanks so much. Thank you.